Hey guys, what is up Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today I actually have a script for this video because I wanted to be well prepared with my thoughts and ideas and what I talk about and stuff like that because this is a very sensitive subject for some people but it also might be an eye opening for some people. The subject of today's video is something called stalkerware or just I guess general malware in general on like an Android device mainly is what I'm talking about. This does in a lot of ways also apply to um, Apple iPhones or even like MacBooks and computers and things like that. Largely though, this is basically geared towards just kind of chatting about it. My experience, my knowledge and explaining why a good majority of y'all are just paranoid or just have really terrible personal security practices. So what I want to get into first is the definition of stalkerware. Stalkerware is basically monitoring software or spyware or malware used for cyber stalking. Basically, it is a software that can monitor your location, has a keylogger built into it. Somebody is using it to follow you. So for a good example of like a physical hardware, stalkerware sort of thing would be when people were taking the Apple AirTags and removing the speakers out of them so they don't beep when they connect to a phone locally. That's a good example of a hardware variation of like stalkerware. An app though would be something like, honestly, Oh my god, the Microsoft Intune app that Best Buy tried to make me install on my phone that didn't work on my phone. That should be an eye-opening in itself. Honestly, that's borderline stalkerware. The amount of permissions that app wanted was just completely asinine for me to just basically use the Best Buy app as an inventory on my phone. And I was, I got in trouble for not being able to use it. They told me to go get a different phone and I said no. But that's a story for another day. But I wanted to talk about a specific situation with Stalkerware when it comes up because I got messaged again by somebody tonight who thought they were in, uh, being tracked, being monitored by somebody. Their phone was all messed up. I remote connected into their computer. I tried to help them out. I looked through their phone. I walked them through how to factory reset it. They were not worried about losing anything because they don't keep much on their phone anyway. <clears throat> Most of their photo gallery was like screenshots of their phone by accident. Everybody does it. They literally had borderline nothing on their phone. Their phone was completely fine. This was another situation of somebody just kind of being paranoid and not understanding. So let me answer some of the questions in this video that they kind of ended up asking. Um, I wish I had something more for you guys to look at, but like I don't have anything for this. <laughs> this came up very suddenly. Maybe I can just like, hold up. Ain't that spooky. Anyway, I'm gonna read directly from my text file of what I sent to them and give it back to you. So. They asked me a very specific uh, question before we reset their phone. Can stalkerware or malware, if it's on my device, survive a factory reset? They had a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Bootloader was not unlocked. Uh, complete factory firmware. Barely anything on the phone. Here is the answer that I gave them. It's flat out no. It cannot. The Android system has what's called Android Verified Boot and DM Verity. These protect against modifications of the system image and the boot image, which would need to be modified in order to survive a factory reset. If system or boot are modified, it'll error on boot and not boot into the Android system. The hash of the boot and system are checked against the OEM signature. A persistent exploit would generally have to be user in a user-installed app leveraging as an unpatched exploit or vulnerability each time the device boots. But the user's apps are generally installed to the slash data partition or folder directory, which a factory reset completely wipes out, thus removing that user installed app anyway, and it would not survive the factory reset. Is there any 
work around to that? Well, I mentioned bootloader unlocking. So what if my bootloader is unlocked? If your bootloader is unlocked, that kind of is a user created security hole. That's the caveat to what I said previously about a factory reset. Even still, you'd have to disable or basically put it to the lowest functionality possible. Disable the DM Verity and the Android Verified System or Air, uh, Verified Boot to load the modified system and boot image, which, for example, if you are rooted, generally, or you put a custom ROM on your device like I always do, you either disabled Verity and AVB or you disabled them down to at least just their basic functionality so the custom images will boot. So again, unless your bootloader is unlocked and you have some form of an exploit that's modified the system already, it's not going to survive a factory reset. An attacker would have to know how to generate and modify an OEM secret key to get their rootkit stalkerware or malware to properly install on the device and stay there through a factory reset. And I can tell you, I don't think there's anybody on the planet that has figured that out. I want a different picture. This picture's kind of cool. Anyway, so they asked me, well, what if I go to some form of a mobile security expert? Those people just exist to basically take money from stupid people. Let me explain why, because that sounds really insulting. In my experience over the years of everything electronics that I do, 9.9 .9 million out of 10 chances the problem is not malware, stalkerware, or anything on the device, but it's actually poor security habits by the owner of the device or just their general personal security. To dumb it down to as basic as I can, basically people just have really stupid weak passwords or they have malware and viruses on other devices that they use all the time, like their laptop or maybe uh, a desktop computer. Even still, you can also just have too much private and personal information on your social media, thus giving more information than you want to to attackers and fishers. Fishers spelled with a PH. What is phishing? That is something I meant to pull up. Phishing is basically the fraudulent practice of sending, generally sending emails or messages purporting to be from a reputable company or source in order to induce an individual to reveal personal information, such as passwords or credit cards or something like that. So when I first started at Best Buy, one of the big things they nail into your head, rightfully so, and people still fall for it, is if somebody calls you on the phone and says, hello, I am... Um, I am so-and-so. I am your district manager's manager. I need three $100 Visa gift cards activated and read me the numbers over the phone. And then you just do it? That's a form of phishing. Generally, you want to have really tough passwords. You want to have as little information that is super private to you or reveals anything like um, a way for somebody to reverse engineer your life off your social media. Great example that I proved a couple years ago. Thank God Facebook got rid of the questions, the security questions for forgot your password. One of my friends told me I couldn't get into his Facebook. I got into his Facebook. All you had to do was just kind of look through his Facebook profile, which was completely public and open, do forgot password, you could guess his email because it was on his LinkedIn profile. Throw that into the uh, email box, click forgot password, and then do the questions. And it was like, city you grew up in, um, first pet name, and like mother's maiden name. If you go through his Facebook, you would have seen mother never married, has only ever had one pet, and he has like born and raised in all over the place, all over the Facebook. Used to. After I revealed all this, he kind of changed his stuff around. Um, he had all that information right on his Facebook. So I put the city. I put the uh, mother's maiden name, and I put um, I put the pet name. 
changed the password, got into the Facebook, and started posting stupid meme photos. Because I'm not a dick. <laughs> but that's how people do sim jacking. That's how people do uh, account stealing and stuff like that. So, for example, Boogie2988, we all love to hate him. Um, for good reason, actually, now that I think about it. Boogie2988 had his YouTube channel stolen a couple years back and somebody simjacked him. Basically, somebody figured out, thanks to being um, doxxed, somebody called the cellular provider, acted as him, got a SIM card mailed to them, put it in their own phone, did password forget, did the text messages to the phone, changed the passwords for YouTube accounts and Google accounts and all that, and stole all of his accounts. If he hadn't gotten the stuff back, maybe he'd be in a better place now. <laughs> Let's think about it that way. But instead of dragging this out, you know, I'm already at 11 minutes. I think I've explained enough. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments down below. My closing thoughts on this is I get contacted by people all the time on Discord, Facebook, text message, by friends or friends of friends, um, or just asked through my line of work or I see it in their like problem descriptions about being stalked or monitored and malware and things like that on their phones. And generally, it's a lack of understanding how the phones work. These phones are very secure. Especially, Android is way more secure than people give it credit for. Honestly, I think Android's a little bit more secure than iOS on iPhones. But I still need to do more research on that before I can personally claim that and like have firm, factual bullet points against that. But in practice, I think Android is probably more secure. A lot of these people think they're being government stalked or they have, you know, an old significant other or an ex-boyfriend and or girlfriend or um, it's an old family member, somebody they divorced from. There's a whole multitude of people that they think they're getting followed by and stuff like that. And majority of the time, it's just somebody who's wearing a tinfoil hat who doesn't know what they're doing as poor security practices for themselves, which is really sad. And it's kind of their own fault. Honestly, there's been a couple times where I've dealt with a few people where it was a couple years later, but it was just simply undiagnosed mental illness. It was schizophrenia in a couple, uh, one or two situations um another situation was a different i don't think they call it multiple personality anymore but it was something along those lines i know you haven't had much to look at during this video but i wanted to get this information out i wanted to make it while it was fresh in my head and i didn't have time to like sit here and make a powerpoint like i've done in the past for subjects like this if anything if you do have worries my Discord information is in the comments down below, but 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not being followed. You don't have some kind of stalker where that's going to survive a factory reset on your iPhone or your Android phone. You don't have, you may have malware on your computer or something like that, but it's not going to be something that you think is nearly watching you all the time. You would basically know, especially on your computer, if somebody's going to that level of you know, trying to hack or something like that, generally you're getting hit with ransomware instead and all your stuff is gone. So anyway, I just wanted to get this out there while it was fresh on my mind and talk to you guys about a kind of sensitive subject, but also a very educative subject. I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.